Hello friends and welcome to the very first episode of Ball Club Confidential, a brand new digital series brought to you by Aspire Media Group, coming you from the heart of Rocky Top, that is Knoxville, Tennessee. We have a great show lined up. I'm your host, Austin Price of VolQuest.com. What an exciting time to be on Rocky Top. Tennessee 8-0, number one in the college football playoff rankings, traveling to 8-0 Georgia, third in those college football playoff rankings, number one in the AP and coaches poll. It's a massive heavyweight showdown coming up on Saturday at 3.30 between the Dogs and the Vols. We've got a great show lined up with two phenomenal guests. But before we get to that, we're going to bring in Spire CEO James Clawson. James, a lot of new legislation, a lot of new happenings in NIL the last seven days. Kind of take us through you know, what the NCAA is now allowing and, and, and how big that is for you all. Yeah, so obviously since July of 2021, we've been under an interim NCAA policy on NIL. And so last week, the NCAA came out with new guidance and particularly regarding how collectives, what, what Volunteer Club is, Inspire, and how universities can operate. So, you know, the big, the big takeaways, you know, schools are able to now help collectives fundraise. They're able to utilize their, the coaches are able to, to participate in fundraising as well. And collectives can be sponsors of schools. So obviously a huge deal for us. You know, I think it opens some doors, you know, that, that we can explore with, with the University of Tennessee. Um, and, I, you know, we're really excited about it. When you look at, at some of those things, potential, you know, ball network sponsorships, Josh Heupel or Tony Vitello or Rick Barnes or whoever being able to come and, and you know, and be at a, an event for you all and, and kind of, you know, impress upon donors, Tennessee fans, how important NIL is and, and how important that is to, you know, the players, how, allowing them to make money off their name, image, and likeness. Yeah, absolutely. It, it legitimizes a lot of what we're doing, right? To have the, the backing of, a, of the school is, is just going to be a, a really important step for us, as, you know, as we, as we continue, you know, 16 months into this. So, you know, we're excited about it. We think it opens up a lot of opportunities for the student athletes at Tennessee through, through deals that we can bring, you know, through donors that we can now talk to. And I think it's just going to be a, a real, positive, real positive momentum for us. The tailgates have been so big for you all this year. It's helped, you know, kind of establish a community. You know, at VolQuest, we've got the General's Quarters. That's our community. With the Vol Club, tailgates, things like this, Vol Club Confidential, allow fans who are part of the Volunteer Club to kind of peel back the curtain and see the you know, the wizard, you know, uh, you know, so to speak. How important do you feel like that's been, you know, for you all to – kind of let the fans just be able to reach out and touch these players. Yeah, so it was, we really didn't know, right? We started this, and we started the Vol Club, and we thought, you know, we'll, we'll create an opportunity for fans to be involved and interact with athletes, and which they've never really had a chance to do before, and we'll, we'll host really cool tailgates and fun parties and, and different kinds of events, and we'll bring athletes, and we'll just see what happens. And, you know, Vol Nation has really, you know, really responded, and it's been super successful. Obviously, 8-0 helps, and having a, a really elite men's basketball team, women's basketball team, baseball's been, you know, as good as it's ever been. So it's never been a better time to be a Vol. And I think, you know, it, we, we've just sort of found a found a niche and it's it's working. Yeah, and, you know, as a part of the volunteer club, you could get a signed autograph picture. You could get some of these cool pieces of memorabilia back here behind us. Oh, do they have it? Yeah. You know. You never know when you may need the old beer barrel on a hat to wear. I mean, it, you know, these are the kind of cool things you get when you join the Volunteer Club. He's James Clawson. Now to the main course. Let's get to our two special guests, and we'll start with one of the best on Rocky Top with the round ball. For our first episode, we're joined by Tennessee star forward Josiah Jordan James. Josiah, you look at the basketball season; it's getting cranked up. You've you've you know, you got the first game right on the horizon here. You're coming back from injury. Mm -hmm. how, how much are you chomping at the bit to kind of get back out there? I can't wait. Um, ever since I got my surgery, right after the season ended, really, um, I had been ready to get back. Uh, I went through practices a little bit uh, throughout the summer, um, got another procedure done, and I'm ready to get back. Uh, I've been healthy for about a week now. I didn't play in the two scrimmage and exhibition games that we had against Michigan State and Gonzaga. Um, just because they just wanted to be as cautionary as possible. But I'm ready to go, and I know uh, the rest of the guys are too. All right, first time we ever met, you were on a visit. 
I was getting ready to go on the Paul Feinbaum show, and you looked at Rick Barnes a certain way then as a recruit. Then you got here, you get coached hard because Coach Barnes coaches everybody hard. hard. How did you look at him then, and then how do you look at him now? As a recruit, I mean, Coach Barnes was the only person, the only head coach who ever told me he loved me throughout the recruiting process. And that went a long way with me. And when he said it, he meant it. Um, what I didn't know was that um, it was going to be tough love. Um, I had been to a couple of practices, and I saw the way he coaches. I mean, he coaches guys hard, and as a recruit, that's what you want. You don't want somebody to, to you know, be lenient or take it easy on you. You want to come in and get better. Um, and I knew that if I came here, he would he would definitely do that and coach me hard. But it's different being on the sideline as a recruit and seeing it and then being in the fire as a player um, and having those dog days where he's just like, on you for the most basic simple things you feel like you can't do anything right um so i'd say as a recruit i felt like he could do no wrong um he looked i mean i i looked at him as just this old guy who just loved to coach basketball wasn't too hard um charismatic and you know some of those things translated over to when i was here but my first month of practice with Lamonte and his experience and then coach being on me I remember there were days where I was like I cannot wait until like I'm done and out of this place because coach Barnes is a psychopath um he he's just a crazy old man he doesn't know what he's talking about um but those days um you know they helped me to get to where I'm at today and like I said it's always tough love with him um, and that's just his philosophy and the way he coaches. And, you know, it took a lot of getting used to it. It took me a lot of growing up to do um, because as a high school recruit, people were always telling me how good I was, yep. how, how talented I was and how easy it would be. And I thought it would, when I first came in, I thought for sure I'd only be here for a couple of months just because I thought I was prepared to take my game to the next level. Um, and it took me a week of being here to know that it wasn't going to be that way. Um, and so I definitely say there were, there were times where I just, I had so much hate towards him. Um, but our relationship grew, you know, it wasn't just him getting on me. My thing about coach Barnes that I really do love is he can go from being in a three hour practice where you, I mean, you feel as a player, you feel like you can't do anything right. He's on you. You're running, you're on the Versa climber. Um, he's yelling at you, but right after practice, he's, he's not that same dude. He's Rick Barnes, the comedian, the charismatic guy I talked about. Um, the guy that loves hot dogs. Yeah, the guy that loves pulling pranks. And he doesn't, like, say you have a bad day at practice, he doesn't hold that against you after practice or when you see him outside of the gym. Um, he's just, he treats you like a regular human being. He wants to get to know you, wants to know how you're doing. And then, I mean, he still talks to you as a, as a coach, um, wondering why you're doing some of the things you are, um, trying to get you to understand the game and where he's coming from. And I'd say my relationship with him now is as good as it's ever been for sure um, just because I feel like you know I, I know so much about him and he knows so much about me I know where he's coming from um, and everything that he does and his coaching is a, comes from a place of love he, do, he wants each and every one of us to succeed and reach our goals and all of our goals is to play at the highest level and he's telling us each and every day how hard it's going to be um, and if you think his coaching's hard you, you won't survive at the next level um, but our relationship is definitely grown throughout the years and that's somebody like the life lessons he's taught me um on the court off the court will stick with me forever and somebody i i hold near and dear to my heart for sure you came in as a five star and you just talked about you know everybody tells you you know how great you are and and, and they love you up H how hard was it to come to terms with i'm not going to be here just a couple of months and my game's got to continue to mature to get to that ultimate goal of playing in the nba it was really tough um there were times where I'd get done with practice, and I, like I said, Lamonte Turner was here, and I was I came in as a point guard, and so I'm fighting for minutes with him, and he is, you know him, he's a dog. Like, he's not going to give you anything. He doesn't take any plays off. Um, and so it was really tough for me in the beginning, but I will give credit to my teammates, and especially Lamonte, because they lifted me up. They were in the trenches with me. They went through the fire with me. They had the same head coach that I did. Um, we all had the same dreams. We, I mean... College isn't the end goal for us. We all want to get to that next level, but we really just relied on each other um, and, and used each other to pick each other up and, you know, get through the tough days and minim minimize the tough days and, and have better days because of it. <laughs> from one guy who's coming back from an injury as his season starts to another guy coming back from an injury. Let's welcome in Cedric Tillman. My man. <laughs> you good? You, yes, sir. You? Great. I would consider you guys almost twins from different sports. I mean, like similar, like kind of like smooth, 
like just kind of have that kind of cachet with your teammates, like never too high, never too low. Um, guys that make huge impacts. You know, when you watch him play, said what? What do you think? Uh, I see passion um, when I watch him play, man. Uh, you know, as well as other basketball players, but I feel like Josiah really just goes out there and plays with a chip on his shoulder. Um, and like you said, I feel like I do the same. So uh, definitely I can see that competitiveness, and I, I for sure say we got that in common. Vice versa? For me, just being in the same room, the same sentence as him, um, it's just a dream come true, really. This is my guy. Um, but, you know, Cedric, he, he's been through so much. I know, like, people don't see the behind the scenes, but as student athletes, like, I know he's been through a lot with coaching changes, with injuries. Um, just the resiliency that he has is really second to none, and that's why he's definitely one of my favorite players on the team, for sure, if not the favorite. Said you had such a huge year last year, um, eighth vol to get to a thousand yards. Um, you go back to when you were first got here. I, I used to drive, used to drive me crazy. They were so. I used to tell you this, like they were so like strate- like telegraphic with it. Like when you come in, it was a run play. They just had you as a run blocker. Mm-hmm. Then you have that huge diving catch against A and M at the end of twenty twenty. You have another diving catch to end the spring game. Uh, you know, a few months later uh, with Coach Heupel, and then you kind of took off. Where did the where did the confidence start to build for you? Uh, man, just my work ethic. Uh, you know, having to go in there, obviously getting older. Uh, you know, new coaching staff uh, right away telling me that they needed me to be a you know a big time playmaker for them. So I think uh, Coach Hype and the rest of the staff just trusting me ultimately helped me get that last push to go out there and be dominant. All right, so Tennessee's off to this unbelievable start, number one in the college football playoff rankings. Mm-hmm. Um, you missed most of that with, with, the, with the ankle injury. Yeah. How hard was that to set back there? And, and you know, I know gratifying as, as, as a teammate to watch Jalen and all your teammates ball out, but at the same time, itching to get back out there. Yeah, as a teammate, man, it's great. Um, you know, as a teammate, as a fan, it's great, you know, uh, you know, seeing how far Tennessee's come. Obviously, the work is not done. Still got a lot of work to do. But as a team manager fan, it's definitely been great to watch. Now, as a competitor, uh, <laughs> that's a different story. You know, it's been <laughs> killing me inside. Obviously, want to go out there and compete, uh, playing those big-time games. But, uh, you know, thank God, uh, Anko's doing good now. Uh, everything happens for a reason. And uh, I'm excited to get back out there. You on the road this week to Georgia. You, you like road games? I mean, I, I, love them. I mean, the atmosphere, the booze, the the animosity, the hate that you get on the road is it's a lot of fun. I definitely prefer. They bark at you, Georgia, for sure, which is weird to me, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but playing in front of a, a sold out Neyland Stadium or a sold out TBA is second to none. But those road games in the SEC are a lot of fun for sure. You, you, do you embrace that? Do you, do, do, would you rather be on the road? Because it's kind of us against the world mentality at that point. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, I like road games uh, just because, one, you know, being able to hang out with your teammates and kind of, you know, travel is pretty dope. But uh, like Josiah said, um, you know, hearing the boos, uh, hearing the fans, you know, on the opposing team uh, is definitely, you know, scoring a touchdown, especially winning, feels a little bit better away. Your your season kind of just now getting here. These first seven weeks have kind of allowed you to be a student. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to go to those football games, sit up there in the crowd. You and your Roche over there, Man, in the student section over there, leading leading the, leading leading the <laughs> leading the pack down on the field after the after the win over Alabama. Yeah, how much fun is that to just be the college student there for a minute? Because you you spend so much of your time in the bubble of basketball, yeah. just to be able to go on the porch for a baseball mm-hmm. game or sit in the student section for a football game. How much do you enjoy that? Like it's hard to describe the the amount of fun that we have when we go out to the baseball games or the the Lady Vols um, volleyball game or the Lady Vols basketball t- game or I mean the football game is definitely second to none. Just a hundred thousand people and even like the 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 day leading up to the game, just being at tailgates, meeting new people, meeting fans. Um, we really try to take as, as much advantage of that as possible before our season gets started, and it's it's been a lot of fun. You know, we, we always try to make our way over to the student section. Uh, we always try to make time for the fans before games, after games. Um, and so it's it's just us trying to take uh, advantage of every t- opportunity we have here. All right, for those Tennessee fans that don't know Cedric Tillman's story, Cedric was uh, a guy that was a late ad to his class in recruiting. 
had never visited Tennessee when he signed here. <laughs> could you have? I mean, could you have ended up in a better place? I mean, when you think about like your career arc and where it was as a recruit, how you ended up here, had never visited here when you signed. That's so different, and yet here you are, and you're playing in front of a hundred thousand every week, and you know, setting records last year and having having such a big time. Man, no. You know, you told me as a kid or even, you know, a teenager in high school, uh, you know, that I'd be here today, I would laugh at you. You know, especially what it was like a week and a half, two weeks before signing day. Yeah. When I didn't know where I was going to go. Uh, like you said, um, you know, kind of committed sign to Tennessee, actually, without even coming here on a visit. Uh, you know, from being from Vegas, I had no idea anything about Tennessee. You know, I thought it was all country music and country <laughs> boots and stuff. Which uh, a lot of it is, but no, nah, man, um, you know, the sports, uh, the support from the fans, the school, everything, uh, even the city, Knoxville, man, has is, is been a dream come true, you know. Never I thought I'd be playing in front of 100,000 people, um, you know, jumping up and screaming all game, you know, with your side leading them, of course. <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, just like your side said, man, it's – it's cool to see. I don't think any other school has all really both men and women's sports dominating the way Tennessee is, and I know it will continue. Do you have a favorite country song yet? A favorite country song? What's the Tennessee's, like, anthem song this year? It's, uh, lo- they play that for the games. <laughs> I can't think of it. Dixie and the Light. Yeah, Dixie, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I think that's, like, the signature song this year. So, My favorite yeah. memory of this year will definitely be that song playing and just seeing the goalposts come yeah. down. Were you, were you out on the field for that? Yeah, I was. Okay. I was. I was. I didn't know if you were back in the locker room. Yeah. Were, you, were you trying to avoid people hitting you at that point? <laughs> no. Stay I off the ankle, everybody. <laughs> I was embracing it for sure. Uh, that's, a, that's a crazy thing. I've never been a part of something like that, so it was cool. Yeah, I listened to that song for a week straight after the game, and so I think I, I got the lyrics down pat. I was just amazed watching the videos, like everybody's videos. I, the the one that struck me the most was the watch party yeah, video. And they saw the when fireworks, they, was, you know, because they off. hear the roar yeah. and they're like, "Oh, oh my gosh!" And then the fireworks go off, and they realize that it's still not on the yeah. screen yet over yeah. there at the watch party. You know, over there, at humanities, and then you, you see it all unfold. I thought that was just kind of raw and and unique and neat. Um, how, how much did you watch social media to watch kind of everybody's different perspective of that? I watched it a lot. I remember, I mean, I have my own videos, but I went straight to Twitter. You know, I got to talk my talk on Twitter. <laughs> um, I'm going I'm to let everybody know how I feel after the games. Um, but, yeah, I'm, like I told you, I listened to Dixie. I, I had heard it a couple times, you know, out or with some of my teammates. You know, Folky's a big country guy, so he played a lot of country music, um, and he put me on to a lot of songs, and that was one of them. But I listened to that song for a week straight. Um, and I just, you know, Twitter was crazy for the entire week, and it, it still is to, to to this day. Um, that game will was one of the best days of my life. Definitely the best, one of the best days since being here at the University of Tennessee. See, that's what I'm saying. You get to be a student, so you get to talk, talk trash. You would never do that in basketball nah, season. See, see, yeah. Whereas he could talk trash during basketball. Season. <laughs> yeah, I let my game do the talking. But when it's my my brothers from other sports out there, my sisters, I'm a I'm a talk for them because I know that they can't or they won't. How, how much do you guys enjoy that? I mean, I know big. I mean, I you know we do Tennessee Prime every week, and Big O, you know, he couldn't do one week because he was going to a Lady Vols volleyball game. Yeah. I mean, like you guys really support n- not just other the men but the women. I mean, you're all these different things. We need to get y'all out to a golf match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's big time, and kudos to everybody. Like the, every sport, it seems like is is playing really well and re- at a high level, and so it's. It's fun to go out there and support your uh, your classmates, your you know the people you're with on a day, daily basis. You got class with uh, certain athletes. You see them in study hall over at Thornton, and so I mean you get to know them. So you want to go see them um, succeed on the field, on the court, or whatever the sport may be. And you know that support goes a long way because I, as student athletes, you know we we go through a lot. We put our our mind, our bodies, um, everything through a lot, and so. I think we we know what it takes um, day in and day out, and so just being there for each other is a, is a lot. Worst worst workout that you have to do with your respective strength coach is what? Um, sadly, I, I I missed a class this year, and if the punishment for that is a five a.m. workout, which is just like a bunch of conditioning, a bunch of cardio for like forty five minutes straight, and so that's definitely the toughest one. You? Oh man. Uh. I'm not sure, man. I think we had a couple guys miss or wasn't showing up to things in the receiver room, not to throw anyone under the bus. But uh, we definitely uh, paid the consequence for sure. Um, 
So, yeah, we kind of learned our lessons after that. So uh, we did a, a lot of running that early morning, just to say that. How much have you enjoyed Kelsey Pope? I've enjoyed Coach Pope. Um, you know, I kind of saw him come in here, uh, you know, first as more of an assistant to uh, a receiver coach, Coach Burns. And just to be able to see his development, uh, not only as a person, but as a coach, uh, man, it's been a great thing to see. And uh, he's helped me a lot. Um, you know, I'm with him. It feels like 24-7, you know, during the day. But I love Coach Pope, and uh, he's helping us out a lot. Best thing about Coach Heibel is what? Oh, man, it's leadership, man. It's leadership. I say number one, you know, obviously that's my coach. I'm going to hype him up a bit. But, you know, I really think that everybody's on board. You know, I think I've never really seen a coach be able to relate to his players the way he does. Um, it makes us want to give 110% out there. And, uh, you know, I appreciate him every day for what uh, he's done for me and my family and for my brothers. He instills a belief for you guys that, you know, I feel like you all have gravitated towards. I mean, like, you know, he doesn't shy away from these moments. Alabama, Florida, checkering, black jerseys, who knows what other uniform combinations in the month of November may come Tennessee's way. But, I mean, like, he just kind of embraces all this and doesn't, like, you know, downplay it or, or, or you know, I think he makes it known that you, there's no blocking it out. Your friends, your girlfriend, your mom, your dad, your cousin, they're all going to talk to you about it. So just let's roll with it, right? Right. Yeah, um, Coach Hype just bees himself. Um, you know, he's not a coach that tries to be like, you know, other coaches out there. Uh, you know, he's Coach Hype. You know, he he leads a certain way. Um, he acts a certain way. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, when you see someone being their general selves, uh, you know, you're able to relate to them. And it just makes you play harder. So, yeah, definitely. I've talked to countless football recruits, a few basketball, a few golf, a few baseball over the years. And they all – say coming in or, well i'll say all i'd say 80 percent of them think before they ever get to knoxville that tennessee's a bunch of cow fields and that type of thing they don't understand knoxville's an actual city yeah. it, it, it was you you talked about country music did you have a similar thought process before you ever stepped foot at, at tennessee definitely i had my own like thoughts about what tennessee was before i visited and i visited here a couple of times but i remember before my first initial visit i was like i really don't feel like going there like i don't want to be around cows and horses and I, that's just not me um i'm from the south but i've never been you know the most outdoorsy person but it, i mean it's a college town that's what a lot of people i didn't realize a lot of people don't realize and you know it's charleston will always be my home but knoxville has definitely become my my home away from home and you know, it's given me a lot more than I can ever imagine. Best place downtown to run around, go eat. What do you like to do? Ah, oh, man, I don't know. That's a <clears throat> put on the spot question. I'll leave your side. I can go first. I live downtown, and so my teammates are always at my place. Um, we live right behind. I live right behind Gay Street, um, and so we we like to go to the movies a lot. Me and Olivier and Zakai and Urosh, uh, especially, will um, get something to eat. Usually some kabuki, just because that's like my favorite type of food, um, and we'll just go to the movie theater. Um, what about you? Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty much a simple guy, so I just like hanging out with my teammates. Uh, you know, especially in the spring, summer when we have more time. You know, we used to just barbecue and grill ourselves and just have a bunch of people over. Um, but man, uh, simple guy, just like walking around Knoxville at this point. It's a growing city, so. Uh, Definitely. Did, did my invite to the barbecue get like lost? And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did say he was, that he was your guy, and they didn't yeah, invite yes. him over. Yes, yeah, you learn something new every day. Yeah. Pete, your, your friends really aren't your the friends. The betrayal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, tough, tough world we live in. All right, so you, you get on the grill. Are, are you doing the cooking? Or are you doing the eating? Yeah, I'm definitely doing the eating, uh, doing the watching. So I'll buy the food, but I'm not gonna make it. Uh, so, yeah, my teammate's uh, Jerome, uh, one of our offensive linemen, he usually... Carvin's a cook. He is a cook, yeah. He always gets on me that uh, West Coast people don't know how to cook. But, uh, yeah, for sure, he does the cooking. And now, man, uh, we don't live together, but, yeah, I definitely have to eat at the facility more now. So, yeah. So, over at Smokey's. Over at Smokey's, exactly. What was, what was the best thing Jerome Carvin cooked? We used to make wings every Friday. Mm. So, grilled wings, fried wings, whatever, uh... Yeah, that was kind of our little tradition in the summer. What's your what's your wing sauce? I like Parmesan garlic, so yeah. 
Absolutely. Must need ranch, too. I'm going to definitely cut out the middleman and just go straight to Jerome because <laughs> said it's obviously good for nothing. <laughs> What about basketball? You got any, who's the cook on the basketball team? So me and Santi are the only two people who live off campus, and Stokely doesn't have any like uh, kitchen area. So I mean, I can make what I can make. Not not a lot. I can do eggs, bacon, toast, um, some biscuits, and a little bit of pasta if I'm in the mood for dinner. But nothing crazy. No, what, not barbecuing like them. What where do you feel like you've had your biggest impact on your teammate off the field? Like food recommendations or, you know, stuff like that. My thing would definitely be TV shows. Um, Hulu, Netflix, HBO Max, I got it all. I got what you need if you like. You know, I, we got people who are into, like, um, superhero movies. My favorite genre is rom-com. I like action. I like, um, you know, suspenseful things. And I feel like I, I've i watched a lot of TV shows, watched a lot of movies, so I have pretty good rec- recommendations. Where have you left your imprint there, Sid? Man, I would have to say the whole team. I feel like a bunch of them try to steal my swag, oh, even man. though they won't admit it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been here now for what four or five years now, so I, I, I think I've left my mark on a few people for sure. Best part of playing here is what? I don't even mean on the field. I mean, is it dealing with the fans? Is 100%. it one hundred percent? Is it's that the, it? It's the community. Um, the fan base is second to none. And I say that just because the people are second to none. They're they're so genuine. Um, you know, it's it's tough when you're you're not winning and not performing the way you want to. And sometimes they'll let you know, which you know is it's hard to hear sometimes. But you know, my biggest thing is people like they'll get on you. But as as athletes and student athletes, like nobody's expectations is bigger than ours. And so we know when we're not playing well. But um, you know, my first couple of years, we we weren't the best, um, the best basketball team. We didn't win. We we lost some games we should have won, and the fans will definitely let you know that. Um, but when you're when you're winning, you're doing well. Um, and I'd say just being in the community with them, you know, they're they're people who just love their student athletes. Like I said earlier, it's just a college town, and they support you no matter what. Um, even if you are winning, if you if you even if you are losing, um, they'll always have your back. You've got Earl and Judy Brown that come to every basketball game. Oh man! And and, and I know they're they're special to the basketball program, yeah. Coach Barnes. But but you players, I mean, it is it you have less players, so it's a little bit tighter knit mm-hmm. community. Um, you know, how much do you kind of relish seeing those familiar faces? Love it. Um, they give us so much support. Um, on road games, they're there. Home games are always there, and they always make it a point to come in and say hello before the games. And you know, just that that sense of just support. You know, from the some from somebody who didn't know you before you got to school here, and now they're just your biggest supporters. It gives you that extra energy that you need, and uh, it, it goes a long way for us for sure. Easy to spot people like Earl and Judy Brown at a basketball arena. A little harder to spot <laughs> specific people in at Neyland Stadium, right? A hundred thousand people. More specific, do you have people that you see on the vol walk that are always at a certain spot that always yell said or speak to you? that you maybe didn't know four years ago that maybe you do now? Or are you so tunnel vision when you're on the vol walk you don't you don't really see faces? You know, as much as I would say, you know, I do recognize them, you know, I'd be so locked in. Um, you know, obviously the fans, you know, I like to take my headphones off, interact with the fans, especially this year because, you know, obviously winding down, you know, the vol walk is something that I always cherish. Soaking it in. Soaking it all in. Senior day uh, next week. Yeah, exactly. Um, it just, man, it goes by fast. So definitely the ball walk, you know, seeing, you know, uh, adults I used to go here, uh, little kids dreaming to go here, uh, fans who support us, uh, is definitely huge. And, uh, you know, the least I can do is interact with them right before the game. Have you thought about running through the tee for the final time next week? <laughs> man, the fact that you just said that, I'm thinking about it now. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, I'm not an emotional guy, but I'm sure, uh, you know, Everything I've been through, everything the T has done for me, uh, I definitely think that'll be a a day I uh, remember forever. Anything? Are you just going to run through? Or you do you, do you? Could you have something planned? I mean, you know, I mean, like, could you have a little creativity with it? Oh, I didn't even know people got creative. I just thought you walked well, out you, for sure. <laughs> sure. Well, you, you can just walk you out, can. but you could also have. You know, I don't know what you know. What you, everybody can individualize it, I guess, within right. reason. All right. Well, now that you told me that, I'm going to have to ask something in there now. I'll definitely be looking to see what he's doing, what number four is doing. Yeah, I have to add something in there for sure. 
you have that you all come down through the stands Mm -hmm. you know how much how much do you kind of you know relish that part of it for you guys because it's it's not quite the same as football because football is such a a spectacle because it you know starts up at the torch bear and goes Mm -hmm. all the way and then you've got the tee and everything else but you know for you last go around mm-hmm. you know you soaking up every 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 little thing for sure road and trips 100 percent. um trying to make the most uh, out of the last last few opportunities that i have i mean it seems like you know we have a whole season ahead but once you're in the you know the thick of it, it it just goes by so fast and one thing two things that i'm very envious of football players is the vol walk and running through the tee i don't know how i'm gonna do it but i'm definitely gonna make my way to try and get to the ball walk and make make an appearance there and uh, run through the team. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but, you know, I might have to dress up, steal Cedric's jersey. I don't know. I'm, um, sh- I'm sure that can be arranged. You could be a walk-on uh, for tight just a end day. for the I just day. need a day. Walk-on That's it. tight end for the day. Yeah. Um, but we – one thing that uh, kind of – the older guys that we've tried to do um, last last year um, to interact with the fans is, you know, they get to the game pretty early, about two hours before the game. And so after I'm done with my uh, workout before the game, I'll go up there with Uro, Santi, and uh, Zakai a lot of the times to just, you know, go out there where the, the student section is. And um, they're already out there. There's hundreds of them already there. And we just, sometimes we have leftover food, like Chick-fil-A biscuits or waters, you know, because they're out there for hours on end. Um, and so we just try to go interact with them, get them ready for the game, let them know that we appreciate them. Um, and then after the games, um, a couple of the big games, we tried to go to the, the student section, went up there a couple of times and just, you know, had a blast, um, just jumping around for joy after wins and just celebrating with the fans. Dress to the nines when you get to these basketball games. I mean, I, I, football kind of y'all can pick. You can dress up. You can dress down. You know, Coach Hype will just kind of let you guys be you. What about for you? It's less of a thing again. You don't have yeah. the ball walk, but I mean, you you rolling in there in a Mark Nelson uh, Never. suit. I can't afford those. First of all, that's <laughs> that's just that's just Cedric. That's just sad. Um, but you know, I, I always pick the cozy route. I always have some, usually some slides or some UGG slippers, and use like what you see me in right now, just a hoodie and some joggers. Comfort is always key. Comfort is key. I mm-hmm. agree with that. That's why I wear Peter Millar. <laughs> All right, so let's roll rapid fire here. Last thing you watched on TV was what? The Blacklist. Uh, scary movie. <laughs> scary movie? <laughs> yeah, scary movie. Batman, Superman, Spider-Man. If you could be one, who and why? Spider-Man, just because... Um, Mary Jane, whichever one you want to pick, she's they're all beautiful. Um, you can't go wrong with any one of them. And I just like the idea of just being able to go wherever I want with my webs. I had to go Spidey, too. That Great was man. one of my favorites growing up. So, yeah, for sure. If you could play any other sport, what would you play? I would play soccer. I didn't play it growing up, and I, I really regret it. Basketball, for sure. Uh, you know, I always kind of talk. Uh, to my teammates and stuff, how I can ball, how I used to be able to ball. But uh, but no, obviously basketball. All right. Favorite cheat day meal in Knoxville? If, you, I mean, if, you, if, if you're not thinking about what you're eating and you just want to go have the best meal you can go have, what are you, where are you going? What do you have? I'm making two stops. I'm going to go down Chapman Highway, stop at Little Tokyo, um, this hibachi spot that, you know, has the best – Yum yum sauce, fried rice, and I usually go with the the steak with it, uh, with teriyaki sauce. And then from there, I'll go to Cruise Farms and get something chocolate. I try to I like to try new things, but anything with chocolate in it. Yeah, uh, individually, uh, I'm a fruit snack guy, gummies and stuff like that. But if I had to choose a a place. Definitely uh, Southern Grit, right by my crib. Uh, I think the workers know my order by heart. So yeah. <laughs> what do you get? They're just some tenders, man. Some, something simple, and they have it all ready for me to go. That's so childish. <laughs> they call it the Tillman. Yeah. <laughs> you're from Vegas. You're from Charleston. Best best one day hang place to go in Vegas and Charleston. Oh man, that's tough. I would say probably the generic answer, probably somewhere on the Strip. Mm. Um, you know, probably at one of the hotels or something like that. So uh, yeah, for sure, probably downtown. Folly Beach for me. Folly Beach. Folly Beach. I'm with you. What moment in your career would you make the top spot in your highlight reel? Winning the SEC tournament last year, for sure. Just knowing the work that we put in. Um, We started the season last year 
two and three in the conference, and then we were one game away from being in first place of the regular season title, and then just going into the tournament down in Tampa with the chip on our shoulder, and you know taking every game as a championship game, and being able to to come out on top was just so big for us, and something that uh, we're gonna try to top this year, but uh, it, it was so much fun to do. I would say probably we talked about earlier the uh, A and M game in 2020. I feel like that kind of got things rolling for me. That diving catch. Yeah, uh, got things going. That was, <laughs> that was a big one. Uh, even though you guys did not come come out on, <laughs> uh, come out on the winning side that day, um, who would be on your Mount Rushmore of sports? First and foremost, definitely Cedric Tillman. He'll be on the far left. Um, I love how we're how, how you, you, far left, far yeah. right, center. Right next to him, LeBron James, greatest basketball player of all time. Right next to him, Serena Williams. Her record speaks for itself. And there's four of them. Four. Right? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Wow. Um, I'd have half Hendon Hooker, half Jalen Hyatt. Half of their face on one, half of their face on the other. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go. Uh, I'm disappointed in Josiah for saying the LeBron one. <laughs> wow. Um, We're not going to do that here. We're not going to do <laughs> yes, that Yes, actually, here. we are because I'm the other generation. Yeah. And I appreciate Sid for taking up for my generation. Yeah, Keep going. Nah. Uh, you know, obviously, I'll put Josiah there. Uh, he can be to the far left, too. Uh, Got to have my dog Hendon in there. Uh, my boy Kobe. And then uh, this, I don't know how we can do four faces, but me, <laughs> Brew, Hyatt, and uh, Ramel. Tough. Let's do it. So you were going to say Kobe. I say I would go Jordan. That's yeah. my generation. <laughs> yeah. And that's the true gift. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give your younger self? Last question out the door. Uh, just to keep going. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, in life, you got to uh, persevere, do things, you know, injuries, uh, maybe not playing as much as you want to, but uh, just keep working hard, put your head down and grind. My thing would be just um, that you don't know everything. Uh, listen to the people who have been in your situation and your shoes before um, because, you know, just stop being hard-headed and stop thinking you know everything. Well, guys, we appreciate you joining us. Two really big-time players at the University of Tennessee, football and basketball. One's career is winding down. The other one's technically winding down, but senior year is just getting started coming up this week. Good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate good luck it. at Georgia, and good luck with basketball season, okay? Thank you. Thank you. My man. That's it for today. Thank you to Josiah and Sed for joining us. Big game this week, Tennessee and Georgia coming up at 3.30. If you're a Vol Club member, make sure you keep on the lookout for that newsletter. It'll come to your email, let you know what bar – Spire and, and the Vol Club will be taking over on Saturday and, and Friday down in Athens, Georgia, before the big game between Tennessee and Georgia. If you're not a member, make sure you get on board, get online, go to the, thevolunteerclub.com. You can kind of see all the things that the Vol Club has to offer, whether it be this cool merch that we talked about earlier, the interaction and, and mingling with the current student athletes. What a time to be on Rocky Top. It's Tennessee, it's Georgia, 3.30 on Saturday. We'll see you next week, everybody.